All right, and we're live. Good morning and welcome to Coffee and Quarantine episode nine, oh, episode 18. Uh, so excited to have you here. We're here with Andrew, uh, who is an amazing artist and musician, and he is going to, you know, give us some entertainment with some art and music today, take us on a tour of his studio. But of course, we want to get to know him a little bit. So Andrew, thank you for being here. Of course, I'm excited. I've been watching your coffee and quarantines. It's been definitely a, uplifting uh, to be reminded of, of uh, I don't know, of positivity, you know, and uh, not to get stuck in my my rut. I, I've done the, the quarantine 15, uh, constantly eating, snacking, <laughs> watching Netflix. So <laughs> it's nice to get inspired to, to do more than just that. <laughs> That's so for the uh, the quarantine fifteen. It's like what was that the the freshman fifteen back in freshman college? 15. <laughs> <laughs> just just Netflix and eating. Well, that's amazing. Well, I'm glad that you're finding motivation in all of this because it's definitely uh, it's been a roller coaster and a wave for some people. And so it's great to hear that you are kind of making the best of it. So. Tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your art and kind of who you are. Sure. Uh, So with me, it starts in family. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm married to my wife, Katie, and we have two kids. Um, My daughter is eight and I have a son Mm -hmm. stone that's uh, four. And um, yeah, this has been an interesting time for us. It's been really cool because uh, Lucy's been home or not not homeschooling, Zoom schooling. <laughs> so, um, and it's been amazing to, like I said to you before, um, it's been amazing to listen in and to listen to her teachers, to talk with her and, and hear her really trying to, to, to learn what she's getting. So um, that's been cool um, about me. Um, I'm just a, I'm a creative guy. I'm kind of introverted, kind of extroverted. Uh, I'm a blend of both and, um, and uh, yeah, I, I make uh, make art. I uh, went to school. Um, I was kind of a jock in high school, <laughs> so um, I played football and I wrestled. And then I went to college, and uh, I loved word working when I was a kid. My dad was kind of like that was our bonding thing, making wood stuff around the house. Mm-hmm. So um, well, going into college. Uh, I wanted to be creative. Woodworking wasn't really available, so I got into art, and uh, I like painting, so I did that. So, um, and I've always been in, in bands and stuff. I played guitar since I was uh, in fifth grade. So, oh wow! I, I've loved. Like I, I listened to what was it? Nirvana, of course. <laughs> pick, up, pick up the. I had this like little classical guitar. Um, and I was playing like smell, smells like teen spirit on a classical guitar in fifth grade. So it was kind of a funny learning opportunity, but yeah. And uh, I don't know. Uh, so right now um, it's, I, I've got a normal 40 hour a week job. Um, and then I'm a, you know, a, gallery, a gallery represented artist. I have a, um, a few galleries uh, in Sedona and Carefree in Phoenix um, that show my art. And then I'm in a band with my wife, Katie, uh, called the Soap Sellers. And so uh, <laughs> Soap Sellers is uh, my last name's Seifert. It means soap seller in German. So I that's for that. love that. I love the name. I love that you've been playing guitar since the fifth grade and that you love Nirvana. That's amazing. So how cool that you have art in galleries all over the state. That's super awesome. Yeah, it was hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of, um, so I'm so excited for you and your wife also. I hope she's going to come on. I don't know if she is, but that'd be really cool. Um, yeah, she is. She is. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. So tell us a little bit about the style of art that you enjoy making. Cause you were talking about woodworking. I know you paint. And I also know that you're into like Fibonacci spiral and sacred geometry. So how does, what does all that look like? Yeah. So, um, I'm literally all over the place. Um, I don't, I get, uh, 
this is something that kind of drives the galleries crazy uh, because they want the specific style and to establish your style and to stay with that style, you know? Uh, but um, I get, I get kind of bored and frustrated and um, I, I'm always looking to discover more, you know, uh, cause art for me, it's, it's like more than just, or it's learning for me and it's wanting to be excited, you know, uh, discovering new things. And, uh, and sometimes it's not, <clears throat> I'm kind of reinventing the wheel a lot of the time, <laughs> but uh, for me, it's fun to just discover. So yeah, I've been messing with, um, I've always had a fascination with form, um, mm -hmm. with like natural, uh, like uh, Van Gogh kind of started it with me, like how he uh, saw a movement of fluidity in regards to how he sees the world. So um, I guess I have to talk, I mean, that painting behind me here, uh, there's a fluidity to it, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that um, Fibonacci's, you know, like that's just explaining the wormholes that are the the core of our universe, you know. Uh, you can get as macro into seeing that helix structure, you know, that DNA structure. Um, you can look at our DNA on a mi micro level, and then on a micro or a macro level, you see our universes. Uh, uh, having those uh, same types of helix patterns, you know? So just seeing like how, if you look at it and knowing that there's no real space in between us, that we have those structures just moving in between us at all times, whether, uh, and, and you see waves. And if you, I don't know, it, it gets pretty crazy how my mind goes in regards to it, but it gets exciting to me. Um, that's why I'm a, a visual artist and not like, like a writer because I just can't explain it. <laughs> I love it. And I love you. You have so much passion around it. You can tell that this is like such an integrated part of you and you express it really beautifully. And I love the painting behind you because as you were speaking, I was looking at that painting and I was like, I feel it. I see it. And it resonates. So what you're speaking does flow beautifully with what you're expressing on art and I, in art and I love it yeah it's kind of integrating like the root system you need everything you need the sun uh, it's a painting called joy that mm -hmm. I've done and so yeah so there's art like that that just has like an emotional feeling or an inspirational feeling to it and then there's art that's just like I want to make because I want to just make a crazy optical illusion. And then there's art that I'm just like, let's discover something. And it's just not, I don't know. <clears throat> it just kind of, um, I'm just throwing things together and seeing what happens. So I definitely show like a bunch of different styles within this. Yeah. Well, would you like to take us on a tour and talk to us about some of the pieces that you have and like take your time showing us because I'm I love your art personally. Like I've seen it. I see what you post. So I'm excited to share that uh, with yeah, yeah. everyone who's viewing. So take us on a tour. OK, well, I guess the fundamental uh, I'll get something real quick just to show you beforehand so everybody can understand the Fibonacci sequence and what I've been kind of experimenting with. Uh, so, let's see here. Can you see that all right? I know it's on a white board. Let me see. So, yes. So, okay, so there you go. Here's kind of the core of the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, it starts with one square, and then um, ultimately what this, what this sequence does is it it adds the number from the previous. So you take one and one, and then you take, and then you add the previous number. One and one is two, and then two and one is three. And then you compound the amount of blocks based on that. So three and two is five. And it creates this sequence. Uh, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21. Um, I don't know if, it, it's tough. If you wanna look into it, it's really interesting and when you put that in a pattern and you go in a circular motion it creates this spiral and this um this spiral creates uh things in nature uh for people who don't know 
I uh, like the, is it the lateralis? Is that what it's called? The, the shell? There's a, like a snail shell? Yes. I don't know exactly what it's called, but I do know what you're talking about. Okay. So there's that. And then if you take like a bunch of them, um, say if you have them and you move them close to get together and then you move it the opposite way, then you're actually seeing uh, the formation of what it looks like from the middle of a of a uh, sunflower, you know? Mm. So you find these spirals in nature everywhere. And so Fibonacci, um, the sequence, I, I also use it on a, a grid pattern like this. So the spacing in between these is all that one, two, three, five, eight. Uh, so it's basically, um, I don't know, I've, I've read a book on, on Fibonacci and uh, I've been out of art a little bit because I've had to concentrate on family a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, but it's it's really the more I dig as deep, the, the more I find that the ratios within the sequence um, are kind of the backbone of of most like broadly appealing art. Uh, so if you look at the Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. if you look at like a lot of different. Uh, types of famous architecture and whatnot, uh, the Fibonacci sequence has a part in all of that. So that's incredible. Hey, so my son wants to stop by and yeah. say hi. Oh, I love it when the fam joins. Come here. Lucy, you want to say hi? Here's this is Stone. Ooh, you want to say hi to Hi. 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 This is Lucy right here. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Stone. I'm trying to smash the painting. Are you yeah, all enjoying your time home? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> More time cool. with mom and dad. You guys are so lucky. Aww. I think Lucy's going to be excited. This is on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's going to be excited. She has lots of favorite YouTubers. Oh, yay. Well, you're on YouTube now. You're just like them. Okay. All right, guys. Oh, my God. See you later. All right, cool. So. so sweet. <laughs> um, but, oh, my God, what, what you were saying about the, the spiral and how you made it into those bars with the same ratio, like, that was so, so appealing to look at like the bars and that you had you even over it. It was just so peaceful and calm. And that's just incredible. Like math. It's like a mathematical formula that's like, like just calm. <laughs> so what I've been doing is just taking stuff and just messing with, oh, you're drinking, I'm gonna drink. Yeah, get a drink, get some water. Hydrate. My, my Andrew sized water jug. <laughs> I like, like it. So yeah, I've been just experimenting with, with that. So I'll just tilt the camera over here. Uh, this has been, this is, how like, it definitely creates like an optical illusion. So I guess I'll bring it in to, to see it closely. Uh, it's like individually placed uh, squares and they're all placed with that same, that same ratio. Wow. That is so cool. So yeah, so this one, yeah, it's crazy because in, in real life, if you stare at like one of the one of these guys for a long time, all of a sudden these ones start creating spirals around it. Wow. So, I don't know. It's kind of it's 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 pretty. Uh, I don't like to use the word trippy, but yeah, it's pretty trippy. I sure. mean, it looks pretty trippy. <laughs> So that was one of my experiments. I'm also experimenting on how, like, if you can tell right here, the middle part, uh, yeah, the middle part is uh, closer to the back, and then it gradually gets, uh, it gradually comes out from the piece, too. Oh, how cool. Another layer and element to it. That is awesome. Yeah, I love to mess with depth. Uh, I think depth within work is is really important so and i think my next series or my next one like this is going to have all of these um like uh, um higher and then each 
each one is going to get uh, lower and lower. So these are the furthest ones, and then on the outside, it'll be the, the ones uh, close or um, closer to us. So yeah, that I don't know. So many ideas, so little time. <laughs> Well, that's absolutely beautiful. And then I love like the circular, the spirals that you have in there. So did you paint that and then like uh, cut it dude, up? It was such a fun experiment. Um, I'll show you one of my machines over here. Whoa. This is my trade secret. <laughs> I've got a, uh, I've got a machine right here. It's hooked up to a polisher. And uh, you can't see it now, but what it does is it spins. And so I can take a board, attach it to this, and it spins super fast. And then I spray paint the middle. <gasps> and what it does is it takes the paint and it just like splashes it out. That's so cool. Yeah, so, so that's what you're seeing right there. Is it's just, uh, it was basically a board that I spray painted uh, different layers around and then I uh, splashed the paint out. Do you know and what that I... reminds me of? Do you remember it? I don't know. Maybe your kids would know what this is, but have you ever heard of spin art? I remember it from oh, when, like, totally. I, yeah, that's what that like reminds me of when you just have that paper and it would spin and we would just like splash all different colors on it. But like yours is way more sophisticated. and. Well, that's, that's it. I remember when I said I was like reinventing the wheel. It's like, I was like, oh, I did this amazing invention. And then some, someone was like, yeah, I did that when I was a kid. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just like, that is why art is so important for kids right there, because we still use it when we're adults. Like, that is so awesome. Oh, for sure. I was, there's this other thing, too, somebody showed me about uh, or showed me. It was this like, really cool thing um it was are these like stencils but they're like kinetic stencils yeah. and you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. and you like thinking about like put your pencil in it and then exactly. swing it around exactly so i was thinking about one of those but if i was to have somebody create it on a, a bigger scale so you can make like really large pieces like that oh. you know because those gears hang them like super small if you just had some type of person with some laser cutter somewhere, cut some like bigger stencils out, you can make like really big ones. So that was an idea for my next. I think you're uh, on to something. That sounds super cool. And you know, we love our sacred geometry and mandalas and all things that are appealing to the eye right now. So I feel like that would, people would love that. <laughs> for sure all right so okay i'll take this one down and i'll show another piece. cool oh i love this this is amazing you have such oh, cool art i really love your um just like your style and the way that you do things um it's just really really cool because you're so abs like it's abstract but also so mathematical <laughs> thanks yeah there's there's something well, there's something to be said behind it, too. It has to have kind of a meaning. This one will be. All right, this one's going to be a little hard to see because it's kind of see-through. Can you bring the camera but closer? This one's called, I'll take this off there. This one is called um, I'm as Dumb as a Doorknob. <laughs> and what it is is it, I deconstructed a doorknob. Let's see here. You see all the pieces? Oh, how cool. So uh, basically what you're looking at is all of the pieces of the doorknob. Wow. So I know, and I, I did it in like a cool movement. And then I created the frame. Uh, that's actually the actual door, too. Really? So, yeah, it was a steel door. And so I took pieces of the door to actually create this too. So that is so creative and so cool that, wow, your mind is awesome. Like your mind is awesome. Um, but I love that. It's like art deco isn't the word that I'm looking for, but it kind of is like Renaissance-y, art deco-y, post-modern. 
It's like all of it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not, it's funny. I'm not a, <laughs> I don't, thanks, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> my actually, like, I thought it was important for us too, because um, I was like, wait a minute, what if there's some type of, like, we're, we're saving things electronically, right? Like, we were, I think that there had been civilizations that had the capabilities to store data in a way that wasn't, you know, like written, you know? So, and lots of the ways that people re like understood the way previous cultures were is through their art. So I was like, okay, well, why don't I take things that are seem simple enough, but are extremely complex and present them in art. So in case anything happens to our data, you know, that's electronically stored, then they'd have something like this. So. That's the uh, coolest that was... thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, right. I really appreciate you and the way your mind works and how you create from that space. That is amazing. Thank you. All right, I'll take you to some of the just experimental stuff. All right, so this is just messing with layers. Um, this is a piece I call the uh, Los Angeles. It just reminded me of like Skid Row, you know? Ah, tell me so, more. So uh, again, we're messing with the, the Fibonacci. Uh, you can tell here, there's Fibonacci marks here, and then also coming this way too. And then I'm messing with uh, also different types of layers mm -hmm. of um, I'm using spray paint, um, I'm using dyes, and I'm using different types of lacquers also. That so, is super cool. Yeah. There's that. And one piece that really explains kind of the Fibonacci style, I'll come back here. It's a pretty big one. Whoa. Is that something we can see? Yeah. Can you turn your phone uh, horizontal? You want to see? Does it? Uh, yeah. Because I, I think you'll fit the whole thing in there. Does that work? Yeah. Because now we can see more of it. Okay, cool. That's amazing. So tell us all about this. This is super nice. This is funny. Nobody, it's upside down. <laughs> I know. Okay. To yeah. Me, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> I know. To me, it felt upside down. I don't know why. Okay. So this one was, um, I definitely stuck with the Fibonacci, um, like the placement of the spiral. So here's two spirals, right? Um, one's coming this way and then one's coming this way. They're actually going in opposite patterns. And what I did is I created like a weave pattern also. Um, like I, I did movement, just kind of creating weaves throughout this. And then just, I, I like creating like, like depth and things that really shouldn't happen because it's uh, interesting. So let's see here. Yeah, so I'm messing around. I I'm just messing a lot up with depth on this one. And then I'm also keeping tuned to the Fibonacci by um, keeping like the geometric parts of the Fibonacci sequence and, and keeping some of those squares and rectangles within it also. That is so beautiful and so cool. I love the colors too. Like that gives it such an like a depth as well. Yeah, thanks. A hey, color's always been. I've never been interested in color, so that's been um, actually my focus recently. Is like, okay, I'm gonna like really try with color. Mm. So I, I got some like really bright primary colors kind of working work with, which is definitely not my style. 
Um, I always say that my wife brought color into my life. Oh my goodness. Because, <laughs> because well, she really did. I, when I met her, everything was just, um, it was, it was a monochromatic almost. Um, when, when you study in college, you know, uh, they start, you start basically creating a painting and then you layer the painting. And when you start with the painting, you start with just basically like, like one color, you know, it's like brown, you know, uh, like a, a, I think it was like burnt or I forget my colors, burnt sienna or something. <laughs> and, and that's what I basically did is I just like, I, I would create my art and forget about the color because it was all about the content and the form and the mm -hmm. composition. And then she was like, you're missing color, you know? So, so that's where that is. I think it's, I don't know, a 1970s call. I love it. I would love to hang that in my house, which brings me to the question, are any of these for sale? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're, they're all for sale. Um, I, uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually going to be moving soon. So I want to sell all of them. <laughs> so, um, pricing on, on this, uh, um, just contact me. Um, they're, not as expensive as you think i don't think i don't know um but uh and, and i can work i can work with people based on their budgets too and if they need payment plans and all that stuff too but it's uh yeah for people who have like a really big space these two paintings here uh the joy one right there that's a uh, four feet by eight feet tall that's awesome and then this one right here is like six feet by four feet Oh, so, wow. That's bigger than I thought. Yeah, it's pretty big. That's super so, cool. I yeah, love thanks. it. Cool. Do you have any more pieces you want to show us? Because I know you yeah, also I'll have music you. for us. Yeah, I have some. Uh, I'll show you one more. It'll show you kind of some of my glasswork. Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm excited. Those are so cool. Oh, whoa. Okay, that's pretty trippy. Right? <laughs> yeah, trippy, trippy, trippy. So, so to give you a background on my glass work, it's, um, I, I was in college painting on canvas and then I got a, uh, a house and I was living, and I, I had painted on canvas, that was my whole thing. And, um, and then I started, uh, one of my neighbors had these huge, um, they transitioned from uh, single pane windows into dual pane windows and they had all this glass. So I was like, hey, why don't I just pay on, or paint on glass? That'll save me money and time. And so uh, I, made, I made this awesome painting. It was so cool. I spent like 40 hours on it. <laughs> and when I was framing it, it fractured down the middle and it split in half and oh. half of it shattered on the ground. And <laughs> right, and I was like in the fetal position, and I was like, I quit. I was like, I, I quit at art. And then Katie was like, you know what? You're just gonna take this and, and pick it up, and, and you're making gonna make something better with it. So I I did. I took the remaining part that wasn't cracked or like broken, and then I took the the broken pieces and I integrated it around the other one, and uh, oh. and I called it change. And then um, I was like, hey, why not just do a series on this? So I did a series um, at a gallery called Practical Art in Phoenix uh, called Fractured, uh, where all of the pieces were, um, I painted it and then I broke it intentionally and then put all the pieces around it. So that's where I got the idea to stack glass on, each, on top of each other. So that's ultimately what this is, is the evolution um, of that. So now I take geometric shapes and I um, stack them on top of each other. And uh, lots of the times, this is one of the 
times that I don't paint on top of the glass as much, but usually I love to paint like organic shapes on top of it. I, I just paint it mostly in the background. For this one. So I can, I'll take this off and so you can kind of see the depth of what the glass looks like. That is super cool. So do you cut the glass yourself? Wow, that is amazing. Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like from the side. And yeah, uh, yeah, I cut the glass myself. I've got a little, this is my like little studio spot here. I've got my, this is this little thing. That's yeah, how you cut it? Stuff. Yeah, you just take a straight edge and then it's got like a diamond wheel. I should know more about this <laughs> because I've been doing it for years, but I think <laughs> it's like some type of diamond wheel right here and you just score the glass. And then what I've done is um, I'll, I'll uh, shout out to my buddy at Tumbleweed Glass in Mesa. Um, you go to Tumbleweed Glass and you get these guys. Uh, what they are is uh, they're pliers with a round edge on them. And what it does is it, it causes stress to the glass and it causes it to, to fracture along the score. Oh, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, and, um, so, and I saw you working with epoxy. So once it's all done for strength, I put an epoxy resin over the top. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Whoa. So. That's all right. awesome. Well, thanks for so sharing that, all of your art with us. You've got some really, really cool pieces. And so for anyone who's been watching and has had the opportunity to see the art, uh, we're going to put up his information, Andrew's information, so you can reach out if you have any questions or you want to um, purchase any of them. There's some really cool pieces in there. Um, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. No, we're not done. There's more. <laughs> but wait, there's <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll come through here. We'll see if, uh... so um, my wife is, like I said, she's the music director uh, right now at two churches, at Unity of Mesa and then also Valley uh, Unitarian Universalist. Mm. So you can see her. Hey, we're ready. It's music time. I'm so excited. The stand, oh, whoops, I forgot the stand. <laughs> That's okay. So what instruments do you play? I know you said guitar. I play guitar and she plays um, piano and we both sing. Cool. And I... so we write our own music and those are, that's what we're going to do is we're going to share a couple of originals. I think we'll do two if we have time. Yeah. Oh, we've got time. It, it, yeah, we've got time. It's 1133. So maybe even if you wanted to do maybe three or four okay depending on how long your songs are also i don't know if they're like grateful dead length maybe two i'll plug that back in they're easy. um yeah i know oh, okay i'm just gonna set it up real quick no they're not that long they're uh like three to four minutes long oh yeah so if you wanted to do like three or four you've got time okay all right And I'm going to stop my video so you take front and center. Okay. What is that? Uh, I don't really have any idea what's going to sound. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to officially meet you. I know Hi. you too. I just yeah. turned my camera off so that you guys have front and center for this. But introduce yourself. Uh, to the viewers. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. mm. I'm Katie. That's Katie Keeper. And tell us. I think we're setting a, a putting a mic on there. Yeah, we're testing the sound. Oh, it sounds um, good. Does can you hear us okay? Yeah, it sounds really good. You just, oh, I can't see you. Let's just do that. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I. Excuse me. It works it's, better. 
Can you hear us okay? Yeah, we can hear you great. We can see you. Oh, did you hear us before? When yeah. we plug it in, we lose the No, we don't. It's different. Well, maybe. It's possible we can't hear you, so we'll just not do that. Yeah. We can hear um, you. Oh, I love that guitar. Both of them. Oh, that's one of his art art pieces. What? He, like, you... he smashed it, I think, at a concert with his band, right? Yeah. And then he re he welded it back together. It okay. still works. But... That's super cool. It's a Gibson SG, and I smashed it at a concert. <laughs> what happened, though, is... He was in his 20s. I broke the headstock when I was twirling around. And so it broke before, and then I was like, hey, oh, well, let's smash the rest of it. And then I was like, wait a minute, I have a Gibson SG. I need to put it back together. <laughs> so. That's amazing. Uh, so the first song we're going to sing is um, it's called uh, Street Light. And I don't know where my copy is. Oh, there it is. It's um, it's ultimately talking about um, how streetlights stationary. Did you want to explain it, Katie? You're really good at it. Because I spit my coffee out. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know if Andrew talked about kind of how the songs come together between us. Um, when we met, we were both songwriters and had very different styles. Um, so it's been fun to kind of grow together and create something different with each other. So he, a lot of times a song will come out of him a melody, but he'll just kind of babble words. And then I'll, I'll get what I call like a download of words um, and then add to it. So it's kind of how it works. And this song, it was cool. I was on a women's retreat and I didn't have a flashlight with me. So I got, I had to get comfortable with my intuition guiding me through the dark forest to find my cabin. And um, it was a really cool moment to stretch myself in that way and to not be afraid of the darkness, but to embrace it. And meanwhile, the same weekend, Andrew, I guess, was kind of feeling those similar, I don't know, energies or lessons. Um, it was Scorpio season this last November, which was wild ride. I don't know if anyone can relate. And this song came out of him. And when, we got, when I got home, we're like, oh my gosh, we both kind of had a similar experience. So that is what this song is about, which is so perfect for the times we are in because it's about um, finding the light within you to guide you right now when there's so much uncertainty. And it's called Straight Light. Here comes our children. We'll see how well they feel. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes. 